Okay, hi there folks, it's uh, Min here. Uh, we're on the RFDS STAR program, Specialised Training in Aeromedical Retrieval. This is a YouTube recording that we're doing with uh, Dr. Dean Taylor, who's on the STAR instructor faculty. And uh, over the next five minutes, we're just going to ask him about one of the sessions that he runs in the Essentials of Retrieval Medicine course, which uh, is our flagship course. So um, so let's get to it. So Dean, um, can you can you... So like, tell us a bit about yourself, about um, your work with the RFDS and, and your background. Yeah, so I trained as a rural GP anaesthetist, um, obtained my JCCA accreditation and worked with retrieval services in Queensland, Tassie and the Northern Territory. Uh, joined RFDS formally about 11 years ago and I'm now the Principal Medical Officer for RFDS Queensland. Okay, that sounds great. It sounds like you've got a lot of experience there in your training as well as your current work. Now we're going to talk about a session that you run um, during the Essentials uh, of Retrieval Medicine course, a three-day workshop. Uh, and uh, the session is Preparation of the Critically Ill. So uh, that, that sounds like a, a fairly broad topic. So w what are some of the things that um, you uh, want to bring across in that session, Dean? Uh, you're right, Min, it is a big topic and it could be a whole workshop of its own. Um, and one of the challenges is uh, getting the key messages across that are relevant both to the people who may be on the sending end and the people on the retrieving end, um, so making it relevant for everyone. So what we aim to get across in that session is some key principles, um, and that is basically optimising the patient care at the scene until the retrieval team arrives. Uh, getting the packaging right um, and ensuring that that therapeutic vacuum that we've all experienced at times um, is avoided in preparing that patient for transport um, and then smoothly ensure that everything to runs expedite the patient's transfer to definitive care. So, I mean, the basics behind that are a lot of, you sort of, you've got to have the core knowledge and we run through some of that in the session. Um, and also emphasising the clarity of communication is really important so that everyone understands what they're doing and what everyone else is doing in the time frames. Okay, that sounds, that sounds quite um, comprehensive. So you mentioned a couple of uh, terms there which I guess some, some people uh, might not be familiar with. You mentioned about um, packaging of the patient and therapeutic vacuum. Do, do you want to explain those for, for people who are not familiar with that? All right, so packaging of the patient um, is basically getting the patient with everything that needs to be done, done before them him. because um, during transfer the ability to undertake um, procedural interventions is quite limited um, and that varies depending on the transport modality used but there's always some challenges procedurally so you try and have all procedures done, um, and all investigations done that you can and the patient stabilised and then all the monitoring and infusions um, rationalised so that you've got everything that's required for the patient but with the, the minimum volume and all the tubes and lines um, placed so that they're not going to get caught on um, poles as patients are loaded into ambulances and airframes. Um, so Okay. And, but so that you can still assess and manage the patient during the transfer. So I suppose that's pa patient packaging in a nutshell. Um, and the therapeutic vacuum is essentially uh, what we experience when um, an example would be that a uh, rural facility rings for a transfer. Actually, it doesn't need to be a rural facility. Um, so a facility rings to organise a transfer, they're told that the retrieval team will be coming and then effectively any active uh, management of the patient sometimes seems to stop. So the patient's not been given appropriate care um, until the retrieval team arrives and that obviously can delay definitive treatment unnecessarily um, and can see patient, patient's deterioration not recognised at that facility while they're waiting for the retrieval team. Okay, well that, that's, that's, that's a pretty good explanation, thank you. Um, now, uh, if, if I'm a, 
Uh, what's the target audience you think for a session like this? Who, who, who do you really aim that this will be the most beneficial for? All right. As I said at the start, I think we're targeting two groups and sometimes people that are the retrieval doctors sometimes at other times are out in the sending facilities. Um, we've seen that in rural facilities and the larger facilities. Um, so we're targeting both those groups really. Um, it's also a value for people coordinating transfer so that they understand what they should be advising both the um, ascending facility and the retrieval team about on their way. Okay. Well, look, that's, that was Dean Taylor. He's a STAR program faculty instructor, uh, and he was talking about his session at the Essentials of Retrieval Medicine course on preparation of the critically ill. So um, in other recordings, we're going to talk to him about pre-hospital airway management. So, so look forward to that one, okay? So thank you, and goodbye.